David Brewster here with a new episode of Chord Play. This is the Chords of Prince, and I've had a lot of requests to feature more of Prince's music. I did make a three-for-all a few years ago, and this is the first time we've actually looked at some of his rhythm and chord work. But definitely, there's no question, Prince is an essential, late, great icon and legendary musician, multi-instrumentalist, you know, vocalist, songwriter, played guitar, played bass, played keyboards, played drums, and a bunch of other instruments. You know, legendary. Uh, his career started somewhere in 1975, and during his lifetime he released 40 studio albums, 5 live albums, 9 compilations, sold over 100 million albums in his lifetime, which that's unreal. But definitely, there's no question, Prince is a legend, sorely missed, but legendary musician. So while putting this episode together, I actually checked out Prince's musical influences, and I'd never done that before, and it really did reveal a little bit more of where he was coming from. And, you know, obviously there's some musicians that are really obvious that they influence Prince. Jimi Hendrix, and George Clinton, and James Brown, and people like that. But then when I checked out his influences, it was like, oh, well, no wonder I love Prince, because all of his influences are legends. Check this out. The chord bass and rhythm guitar examples in this episode came from five Prince albums, and like I just mentioned, he has 40 studio albums, you know, in his catalog, which that's a lot of music. That's a mountain of Prince to climb. But I basically was looking for chords. Remember, this is chord play. I'm not worried about popular music or hit songs or anything like that. I'm interested in chords and finding some different approaches and ways of using them or arranging them, performing them, whatever. This is chord play. So I basically was seeking, you know, these kind of hot and spicy, you know, Prince rhythms and chord work. So here we go. The opening, that's Bambi from the album Prince, which was technically Prince's second album. And it's this energetic, you know, fuzzy kind of jam riff. And it definitely reminds me of Jimi Hendrix, Eddie Hazel, and people like that. But something like this. <laughs> something like that so it's very energetic there's a lot of things going on right here and he's basically starting with the c-sharp minor 7 hits it hard and slides it off and then you hear this you know b over d sharp to an e power chord right? and then that b over d sharp to an e power chord and then this low e power chord down there like that that low E power chord, you're going to relocate back up here and grab the top part of that E power chord while that low E is still ringing. Right. And you hear this little fill in there. It's all fuzzed out. Right. And then as soon as you do that, you want to do a thumb wrap, grab that C sharp, and then you're going to hop over here and grab that G sharp on the B string. And then you're going to do that same B over D sharp to E. Right. And then you're basically sliding uh, power chords, but it's the, the minor and major third, that G to G sharp. You know, so instead of doing like a typical, you know, like a hammer on or something, minor to major third, there he's sliding the power chord. Because keep in mind, we're in E. Right. And he's right back into the... And there it's a thumb wrap C sharp to that single E note. And then that, you know, B over D sharp to E. And then right there. Right there, you're going to basically hammer on in that F sharp, that E to F sharp. And then you're going to basically grab that F sharp and bend it to G sharp. Right? And then you're going to basically end with a low E power chord to an F sharp. And then basically it moves right back into that C sharp again. And there's like an intro solo right after that. Killer riff, killer song. And I've actually had requests to feature Bambi. And there it is. <laughs> Next 
intercepts the chord riff in Controversy, the title track on the album Controversy, and this is definitely an example of Prince just hitting like a static chord and kind of funking it out like this. <laughs> So it's really short and sweet here, and it's really just kind of scratching and sniffing on one chord right there. Right? Think of that as like we're in F sharp. Right? And you can definitely hear like the bass and stuff. And you're kind of holding down that F sharp. So we're playing an F sharp 7 sus 4 right there. It's really just that B note, E note, and F sharp. It's a three note chord. And he's doing this real scratchy, muted. That, and you can barely hear the notes and it's really mimicking like the vocal like rhythm or whatever like that and eventually and he goes right back into that F sharp 7 sus 4 Except the song Party Up, this came from the album Dirty Mind, and once again it's this funky scratch and sniff rhythm, like this. <laughs> like that so it's basically this really interesting and you're basically doing like part of an e5 e6 to e7 like that so you're really playing that a note against e and then f sharp and then g like that and then you do it again there's some scratching in there and you're gonna basically do that twice in a row right there that e5 e6 e7 and then there's a really interesting like contrary motion thing happening here. It's a C5 to D major. Like that. You know, one note's going up, the other note's going down. You know, really cool. big hits. It's almost like a James Brown hit, but this is a Prince hit. And that's an A minor 11 right there. Like that. And you really just bang it and slide it off. You can go right back into that riff. Next up to the song Do It All Night. This is also from the album Dirty Mind, and it starts with this heavily accented C sharp octave, and then it moves into this funky, jazzy kind of riff, like this. <laughs> So a C-sharp octave right there, nail it. And then you're going to basically do a thumb wrap, or at least that's what I'm hearing. Uh, you could do it without the thumb wrap, but it's F-sharp. And you're going to basically play an F-sharp 6 to F-sharp major. So we're really just adding that uh, D-sharp right there. Right? So we're just kind of taking that on and off. And then take that, move it into B, and you're going to basically play with B major. And then a B6-9 right there. So it's a similar movement than what we had in F-sharp. 
right there, it's that single, you know, D sharp. And then when we move it to B right there, we're basically barring right there on the ninth fret, you know, grabbing this uh, G sharp and that C sharp up on top. So I like that kind of, you know, change in the chords right there. has a very classic kind of sound really cool next up the song paisley park this came from the album around the world in a day and there's nothing really crazy happening chord wise i just really like this chord progression and i like the song too but the progression definitely has this classic kind of sound it reminds me of songs from people like otis redding Jimi hendrix and the beatles but paisley park something like this <laughs> starts with power chords in the beginning and there's actually some other stuff that happens before this this is like the beginning of the verse technically but it's really just a5 f sharp 5 to d5 right <laughs> D go back to A and then just end on that E down there. Do it again. Get the D. And then right there it's F major to G major. And then it's A sus too. Five over A right there, and you're kind of picking, picking it out. Back to A sus two. And the last time right there, it goes right back to that kind of you know Hendrixy turnaround, that F to G. Check out Paisley Park, great song. And that kind of, uh, I don't know, subdued guitar part, it's not really in your face, but I really dig that, it's cool. Next up's the song Temptation. This is also from Around the World in a Day. And there really aren't any like actual chords being played here. There is an implied chord progression, but Prince is using an octave effect on the song. And I always loved when he would do this. And uh, even though it's implied chords, I had to include this one, like this. You know, something like that, really cool. Definitely starts with this, you know, heavy kind of bluesy riff. And then, you know, it starts on that C sharp there. And then it's like D to that C sharp, so it kind of moves up a half step there, grabs your attention. And then he starts vamping on that C sharp, so it's an implied C sharp 7. ends up on that F sharp down there so it's an implied you know it's like a 1 4 and C sharp you know really interesting 
interesting part. Like I said, there's not really any chords happening, but it's implied chords, that C sharp. <laughs> that F sharp with the octave effect and everything that sounds so cool and then at the end and then you hear it go back to that C sharp but then you hear the minor to major you know third right there and that's starting the verse right there Really cool stuff. All right, last but not least is Alphabet Street. This is from the album Love Sexy, and this is a very simple, you know, Prince example here. And there's nothing crazy going on. Well, there is a crazy single note riff at the end, but uh, I just like this song. It just has kind of this fun, you know, happy kind of vibe to it. Basic triads, kind of scratch and sniff, you know, funky style. Something like this. <laughs> Something like that. So it starts G major right there. Right? And just a G major triad right there. And it looks like I'm fretting with my thumb or something maybe back there, but it's it's not fretting back there. It's really just those three notes or three strings. I'm just muting with my thumb right there, you know, on those lower strings. So that's it. Just the triad. Take that G, move it up to C, and do it again. Move it to A right there. And then just like we had earlier with that C sharp octave, but now it's a D octave. Hit hard right there. And then you're gonna move back to G, up to B flat, and then up to that C. three of those you've got and one more time it's G minor blues but we're doing and there's a lot of different ways you could actually fret and finger that down there but that's the way I prefer to play it I'm honestly not sure physically how Prince played that but that is pretty comfortable right there I'm just kind of moving out of position there at the end. So you can definitely find some other ways of playing that, but that fits for me. All right, that's going to wrap this episode of Chord Play with this look at the chords of Prince. Definitely a legendary, late, great icon of music, sorely missed in today's world. I mean, you can see it everywhere. And I see people paying tribute to Prince, you know, frequently, whether it's a re-recording of a song or maybe it's just inspired by Prince. But definitely, his musical, you know, thumbprint or fingerprints are everywhere. And it's really inspiring to notice, you know, what the, the funky rock out kid from Minneapolis did. Literally, I mean, the entire world noticed his music right alongside other like icons from the 80s, like Michael Jackson and Madonna and people like that. But it's really interesting, really inspiring. And it's historic. I mean, it's music history being made right before our eyes, right there on MTV and world tours, you know, magazines and stuff like that. Prince was everywhere. And I mean, he crossed like racial barriers. He crossed, you know, musical barriers. And there's something about that. You know, when you take, you know, somebody that's that talented, multi-instrumentalist, I mean, music was just pouring out of his, his body. I mean, it really was. Whether he was singing it, playing it on a guitar or bass or drums or keyboards or whatever he was doing, it was just music, first and foremost. That was the most important thing. And another thing I really respect about Prince is he never stopped playing guitar. You know, a lot of artists, whenever they get really famous or big, they just let somebody else play those parts and maybe they just sing or whatever. But with Prince, he always pulled the guitar out, would play some wicked solo somewhere. Think of the Super Bowl, you know, when it was raining and stuff, when he was playing Purple Rain. I mean, that's iconic, legendary, historic music right there. Prince was the man, for sure. 
So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to my lessons, and I'll be back before you know it with more content and material. Thank you.